the late 1700s, most people worked in the fields on land they did not own. Those who owned the land, called aristocrats, lived refined lives in elegant manor houses. Servants raised their children and did their housework. The landowners and the people who worked for them depended upon each other. It was a system that had existed for centuries. In towns across England and the United States, a series of extraordinary innovations would alter the way people lived and worked for the next 150 years. The Industrial Revolution was a time of innovation, growth, and change. It began in 1770 in Britain and with the help of Samuel Slater, spread to America in 1820 and lasted until 1870. Samuel Slater was born in 1768 to a farmer and was an apprentice to the owner of a cotton mill in his teens. Before coming to America in 1798 to build his own textile empire, he memorized the mechanics of Richard Arkwright's mill machines. Samuel Slater is credited as being the father of the factory system and is responsible for bringing the modern factory to America to increase production. Fun fact! After Slater founded the first factories, the idea caught and spread through the country. With increasing reliance on the factory system, there was increasing reliance on natural resources. The three main resources were coal, oil, and steel. By the 1890s, mining had spread to the Appalachian Mountains, out to the Midwestern prairies through the Cascades and Rockies, making the U.S. the largest coal producer in the world with more than 700 50,000 coal miners. Coal was popularly used in powering railroads, steamships, and of course, factory machines. For a large source of power and fuel, people turned to oil. Oil rigs were used to mine for oil and this also began in Pennsylvania and spread west and ultimately ended up in Los Angeles as well. It wasn't until 1901, though, that the industry boomed and John D. Rockefeller became a major oil baron with one of the first monopolies. Steel was also a very important natural resource. The use of iron became popularized in 1770 and eventually was refined for the production of steel. Once refined, it became durable building material and in fact was used to create the Transcontinental Railroad. Along with steel rising in popularity came the Bessemer system. Created by Henry Bessemer, an English engineer, inventor, and businessman born in 1813, this system allowed for mass production. The system works by removing impurities from the iron by oxidation, which also heats the iron and keeps it molten enough to be molded into steel. Fun fact. Production for the Transcontinental Railroad was approved by President Lincoln and building commenced on March 7, 1864. The construction of the railroad connected the east and the west coast and made for faster, easier travel. This cut cross-country travel time down from six months to a little under a week. This was a huge improvement in expanding westward. The creation of the railroad inspired others to begin refining forms of transportation, and that was followed by the creation of the plane by the Wright brothers and the first car by Henry Ford. Ford's first car was the Model T Ford. It is also credited with the creation of the assembly line to speed up production. This was later implemented in most other factories and places of production. Fun fact. The creation of the Transcontinental Railroad also created a command for faster communication. This is where Samuel Morris, Alexander Graham Bell, and Thomas Edison all came in. Samuel Morris
first created the telegraph along with Morse code. This went along the railroad route and was the first efficient way of communication. In 1844, the first telegraph message was sent from Washington, D.C. to Baltimore, Maryland. By 1866, the telegraph line was laid across the Atlantic Ocean from the U.S. to Europe. Then there was Alexander Graham Bell who invented the telephone. You are my Alexander Place of the telegraph because it was even faster. It was invented in 1876 and the technology is very similar to what we still use today. To compete with this, Thomas Edison created the phonograph. Uh, now, Mr. Blaine, as you've been nearly around the world, I'll take you around the world on the photograph. I'm not sure to anything. I'll take you on the steamer, uh, and you cannot see but the Liverpool, and from Liverpool to London, from London on the London and Brighton Railroad to Brighton. And from Brighton, you go on those little two cent steamers across the channel to Kelly, and from Kelly, we will go on the Kelly to Fur de Port. I can't give you the exact belief. Comparable to a record player. This never grew to be as popular though. Edison did prove to have success. Elsewhere in electricity, he created the first light bulb and exploited the uses of direct current. To compete with Edison, Nikola Tesla exploited alternating current that was then used to power homes and transport electricity over long distances. We still use both direct and alternating currents in almost everything today. Fun fact. The Industrial Revolution led to a boom in an industry and technology. This expansion led to socio-economic changes in America and helped shape America to be what it is today.